Hello, everyone. Um, welcome. Hi. Thank you so much for joining another SciFest Africa event. For the first time in 24 years, the festival has gone completely virtual. We are embarking on a six month virtual journey with events consisting of presentations, panel discussions, science shows, workshops, amongst many others. The theme for the year is <laughs> Take Root Nurture, and we are celebrating the International Year of Plant Health as proclaimed by the United Nations. The theme recognizes that plants constitute the foundation for all life on earth, ecosystem function, food security, and boost economic development. The theme feeds into the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and recognizes that plants are relevant in various disciplines. In 2021, we encourage our contributors to recognize the importance of plant health and how this is a pipeline for technologies, innovation, economy, and products in their field of research and expertise. Today, we are super excited to be bringing you our second installment of our Discover Workshop series, where the wonderful Tanya Reinhardt will walk us through a fun and engaging live science demonstration on volcanoes that parents and children can participate in using basic ingredients from home. Welcome everyone again. Welcome to our Facebook Live viewers popping in as well. As always, these workshops are recorded and previous ones can be found on our website and Facebook as well. To give you all a bit of background on our speaker, Tanya Reinhardt is the Science Center Coordinator at the Science and Technology Education Center at the University of KwaZulu-Natal. She was instrumental in establishing the SDC, STEC in 2008, and it has grown from a science museum to a vibrant educational center for various levels. Apart from developing and delivering workshops, she also has a passion for science shows. Her love of rocks, gadgets, and experiments makes her a frequent guest at events such as the Royal Show, Zulfrest, and SciFest Africa. Her Germanic sense of humor and her passion for geology won her awards as best workshop presenter at SciFest Africa in 2013, 2017, and 2019. She holds a diploma and a PhD in mineralogy from the Ruhr University, Bosham in Germany. Please make sure to keep your microphones muted. And if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the chat discussion and I will pass them on. On that note, let's get started. And Tanya, I'll pass over on to you. Thanks, Steph, and welcome everybody to this hot day and uh, right uh, according to these hot days that we have in Durban and apparently also in Cape Town, we are going to have... It's not hot today. Is it not hot today? Oh, no, here I'm melting. Ah, in Durban it is so hot. And we're going to have a hot topic because we're going to talk about... But it's not hot anymore and is we swam. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Okay, shall we get started? All right, so we talk about volcanoes and we're gonna, I'm just gonna share my presentation with you. Okay, so volcanoes. And did you actually know, or do you actually know that South Africa only has one active volcano? Yes, we do have a volcano. We have an active volcano, which erupted last in 2004. And we have this volcano on Marion Island. So if you don't know where Marion Island is, so there's Grahamstown somewhere here. Okay, and Marion Island is about 2000 kilometers off the coast of South Africa. So, and there we had really an active volcanic eruption. Awesome, isn't it? And suddenly, the landscape now looks like this. Just imagine you see a mountain. So you're on this lake here and you're rowing and enjoying the view of this fantastic mountain, and suddenly, the top is gone. And I'm pretty sure you can already guess why this is gonna is gonna uh, uh, why this top has gone. This can somebody guess what you think? Why did the top go off? And why suddenly did all the the uh, the trees disappear? Any ideas? I don't I don't know. 
maybe you this don't know. is the volcano you know. erupted. Yes, you're absolutely right. The volcano erupted. And this is a very, very special volcano. Oh, this behind. volcano is Mount St. Helens. Okay, so this is the Mount St. Helens eruption. So the top of the volcano <laughs> off. A very violent eruption. And this is another eruption on an island called Hawaii. Yeah. Do they look the yeah. same? Not really. So they look oh yeah, there is a volcano there. Okay, sorry guys, if you can just mute yourself, please. Thank you. Okay, right. So we have a Hawaiian eruption as well. So they look completely different. And what we're going to do in this workshop today is we're going to explore why some of the volcanoes are very vicious and some of the volcanoes are not so vicious. At 8.32 a.m. on Sunday, May 18, 1980, an earthquake initiated the greatest landslide in recorded history. Mount St. Helens erupted with an explosion heard 700 miles away. into the sky. Gigantic clouds of ash towered 16 miles above the mountain. The summit 1,300 feet of Mount St. Helens was gone. So you can see that this Mount St. Helens eruption is very, very violent. And, you know, you have ash going up into the air and really, really very, very violent eruption. And then we have Hawaiian eruption. And let's have a look at this, how these volcanoes erupt. why we actually have uh, or how these volcanoes erupt and what's basically happening. So here at the bottom, the green section, that is basically underground. This gray, strange looking cone on top, that is in fact my volcano. And out of this volcano comes an ash cloud. So this is a model, this is PowerPoint. So what I can do now is I can take a circular saw and cut a volcano in half, which we unfortunately can't do in real life. But for, for uh, argument's sake, we can do it today. So here we go. We're going to cut them off. Right. So inside, in fact, below the surface, we have something that's called a magma chamber. 
and magma is nothing but molten rock. Think about like a candle. If you think about a candle and you light a candle, what's happening with the wax? The wax starts melting. And then what happens if you blow off the candle or if the wax drops onto something? It turns hard again, isn't it? So your liquid wax that's been molten turns hard again. And this also similar works to uh, how volcanoes work. Okay, so you have hot molten rock coming to the surface. And you've seen this with the Hawaiian eruption. That says this basically this red stuff is in fact hot molten rock. And it's so hot that it actually glows red. And when it cools down, it in fact turns a blackish color. So magma, as soon as magma, so the hot molten rock below the surface comes to the surface, then we don't call it magma anymore. We call it lava, right? So, and here we can see this lava. So again, it's red because it's very, 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 very hot. Okay. As soon as it cools down, it usually becomes like a darkish color, for example, black. So how do volcanoes grow? So we have hot molten rock coming to the surface. They run down the sides, just like water. They cool down, they turn into a rock. And this is basically how your volcano grows. And what I want to show you, and I hope it's going to work. What I want to show you is an experiment, which I do here. You can try this at home at a later stage. Okay. so. And for this, I made some jelly. So this little yellow jelly, assume this is my volcano. Okay, so usually it's a little bit more uh, um, uh, fixed. And inside here, I've got a needle. Okay, so what I've got here, this is my, what I call my magma chamber. So what we're going to do now is we are going to, and I hope it's going to work, right so i'm just gonna insert it here we go i'm gonna lift it up right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to basically inject my magma into my volcano and i i don't know if you can already start seeing how when i push down how my magma starts erupting and you can see something else maybe inside here not all the magma comes to the surface but also gets stuck on the way inside so you can see magma and i hope that you can still see magma erupting here we go and i'm gonna inject it onto a different position so we're emptying the magma chamber so the hot Molten rock starts rising, and sometimes it comes to the surface, sometimes it gets stuck. And here you can see on the side, there's another volcanic eruption coming up, some lava coming to the surface. Okay, right. What I want to show you is, in fact, that not all the magma came to the surface. But when you look very, very closely, you can see that there is, in fact, some lava got stuck on the way up. And this is also quite important. So not all the magma comes to the surface. Sometimes it gets stuck on the way up. All right, I'm gonna put this to the side. Right. Right, so. I don't know if you know that there are different types of volcanoes and they have different shapes. So on the top, we see a volcano called a stratovolcano. And this is uh, here, we can see the Etna in Sicily in Italy. And then at the bottom, we have a shield volcano. So this, this, is, is, a flat. Also, no, 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 this is a flat volcano, okay? So, and here you can see this is a flat volcano. And this one forms on, for example, Hawaii. This is a, 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 Ma, a Mauna Loa on Hawaii. And you can see that's fairly flat. And what we're going to look into to, uh, now is 
Why do we get steep volcanoes? And why do we get flat volcanoes? And with this experiment, you can actually join me, okay? Because we're gonna talk about the properties of these lavas that come to the surface, because these lavas have a special property called viscosity. And viscosity tells you how runny a liquid is. And this plays a very important role when it comes to the form of a volcano. And we talk about high viscosity, when our liquid is not very runny. And we're gonna talk about low viscosity when it's very runny liquid. Right, so let's just dive into the experiment. And I hope if you have, if you have something like peanut butter, if you have something like dishwashing liquid, if you have something like ooh, tomato sauce or some caramel syrup, you can do this experiment. You just need a plate. All right, and what we're going to do is we're going to investigate how runny the different liquids that we have are. So let's assume I'm gonna I'm gonna put uh, some uh, dishwashing liquid lava, and unfortunately you can't really see it because it's here. But I hope you can still figure it out. And I've gonna have some tomato sauce lava. Here we go, tomato sauce lava. And I'm going to have some syrup lava. Whoops. And hopefully I can just, whoops, get it off. Here we go. And I've got some peanut butter lava. Okay. Mm. So now, when you put them on the plate, you notice something. You might have noticed that your syrup and your dishwashing liquid is in fact kind of spreading out, whereas your peanut butter and your tomato sauce is kind of sticking together. So if I'm going to tilt this, you can see um, that your syrup is start to run down, um, your tomato sauce a little bit, your dishwashing liquid, unfortunately I, I have clear dishwashing liquid so you might not see it as well, is kind of running down quite dramatically. If you use oil, for example, it will even run down even further. And this is basically, this is very runny. So it's got a low viscosity. This is not so runny. So they have high viscosity. Right. So the question is, why do they, why do these liquids behave so differently? Why do run, some run more? Why do some run uh, not so much? And this is because of their chemical composition. So viscosity depends on their chemical composition. But also viscosity depends on temperature. The question is, how does it depend on temperature? And for this, I prepared another experiment that I want to show you. Um, you can try it, but please, because we are handling with hot and cold, uh, cold stuff, so you might need an adult to help you with that. Okay, let me just get you shared from the camera. Right, side. Okay. So what I've got here is fairly hot water and I've got some syrup in my fairly hot water. And here I've got a bottle that's been cooled down. So it's the same material. It's the same material. But one is cool and the other one is hot. And Ryan, if you can just start poll one, please. Ryan. Okay, all right. So I want you to maybe answer the question. If your lava is hot, then the lava is more sticky or the lava is more runny or nothing changes. What do you think? 
So some say, say, yeah, the lava is more sticky. The others say the lava is more runny. So think about it. So cold lava, hot lava. So there's my hot lava. Is it more runny or is it more sticky? All right. Hello. Yes. Only five people, please. Everybody can participate. Everybody can vote. And nobody's going to see okay. who's voted what. So you don't have to be embarrassed if you don't get it right. Oh, yes. So, and you can discuss it in your family. So maybe some say, oh no, it's more runny when it's cold, or it's more runny when it's hot. No, this is what people are it's more to discussion. Right, so go for it. So currently we have in front and it's yeah. Can we, can, is anybody else gonna do this? Otherwise we are gonna close it in 10, nine, eight, seven. I can. Six, uh, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, all right. And I'll tell you the results of the polling. And I'm going to share the results with you. So, two of you think that the lava is more sticky, and six of you think is that the lava is actually more runny. And nobody says nothing's going to change. So, definitely, temperature has an influence on it. So, remember, this is my cold one. So, now we're going to do, you did do the prediction, now we're going to do the experiment. So, this is the cold one, and I'm going to turn it upside down. And as you can see, nothing's happening. Right, so this is the hot one, and now I'm going to turn it upside down. And you're absolutely right, your lava is actually getting more runnier, so less viscous the higher the temperature. Okay, so you can try this out at home and see how these liquids behave. So, think about also, you can also melt peanut butter, remember. Okay, so generally, the higher the temperature, the lower the viscosity. Okay, so what has it has to do with our rocks? So we were talking about different liquids. And just like we were dealing with different liquids and different chemicals in the, that make up these liquids, rocks also are different kinds of liquids with different chemicals. Okay, so if you think about it, that magmas or lavas can have different compositions and also different viscosities. Remember this one here, our peanut butter? So this is close to the viscosity, so the runniness of something that's called rhyolitic magma at 800 degrees. So if you have black peanut butter at room temperature, it is actually as runny as rhyolitic magma at 800 degrees. And when this rhyolitic magma cools down very quickly, you get a rock called a rhyolite. And if you've ever been to the Lebombo Mountains in KwaZulu-Natal, then you basically know how a rhyolite looks like because the top of the Lebombo Mountains is basically made up of rhyolite. And then we have this. Oops, sorry. We have this. We have tomato sauce. And you know how runny tomato sauce is, don't you? Okay, so tomato sauce at room temperature is as runny as basaltic magma or basaltic lava that comes to the surface at 1200 degrees Celsius. So 1200 degrees Celsius, that's 12 times hotter than boiling water. And if you ever, and don't do this at home, uh, no, sorry, don't do this at all, uh, got burned by hot boiling water. You know how hot this is. So this is 12 times hotter Ooh. than boiling water. So the tomato very, sauce. Like tomato yeah. sauce, but it's got different chemicals in it than tomato sauce. So your, your rocks are not actually made out of peanut butter or tomato sauce, but just uh, I'm using this as an example of how runny things are. And then you get a basalt when they cool down. So the basaltic magma, if they cool down very quickly, you get a rock called a basalt. So my question is, 
Now you've seen the different kinds of lava. So which lava would form a shield volcano? Remember a shield volcano, those ones are the flat volcanoes. And which lava would run a stratovolcano? And you can see a stratovolcano has got these steep sides. So Ryan, if you can just launch the poll again, please. So what do you think? Which sort of lava would form a steep-sided cone-shaped volcano, a stratovolcano? So low viscosity runny lava will form a stratovolcano or high viscosity sticky lava will form a stratovolcano. So like a cone-shaped volcano. What do you think? You can just vote now. Okay. So two people only voted, more people are gonna vote. Oh, and it, it's, 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 it's uh, oh, head on, head on. So two people still think low viscosity lava, lava, three people think high viscosity sticky lava will form a stratovolcano. Five people think low viscosity, three people think high viscosity and, and it's, it's really head on. We've got now four for high viscosity, five for low viscosity. Anybody else who wants to vote? Okay, and in three, two, one, and we're going to end the polling. Okay, and I'm going to share the results. So what you can see is that the majority of you think that low viscosity runny lava will form a stratovolcano, whereas high viscosity sticky lava, um, only four of you think that those ones will form a steep sided volcano. Right, so I think it's time for another experiment and an experiment that you can do at home again. Okay, I'm going to come back to my plate here. All right. So remember, this is not runny lava. So this got, has high viscosity, so not runny. This is runny, low viscosity. So if you would have a low viscosity lava coming out of your volcano do you get a flat side or a steep side here so you can see it starts spreading out it's running down it's running down so now here i've got and you can do this as well you just add another teaspoon of peanut butter on top of your lava that cooled down and what kind of volcano did you get? Mmm, yummy. Mm. I know it's a yummy volcano. You actually get a fairly steep cone. So for those who said, and I'll just gonna this again. So for those who said that in fact a stratovolcano with not so runny magma formed. Uh, a structural volcano, you were absolutely right. So the shield volcano, remember here, the lava runs down very, very quickly and it goes, can go very, very far out. You can see at the top. Whereas with the strato volcano, the lava actually is not so runny. It's fairly sticky. So it doesn't get that far before it cools down. So that's why not so runny magma or high viscosity ma lava will basically form a stratovolcano, whereas low viscosity lava would form a shield volcano. So shallow cone, runny lava, so low viscosity. Steep cone, sticky lava, high viscosity. So remember, those ones are the types of volcanoes. So whenever you see a very steep cone shaped volcano, a stratovolcano, you can actually tell what kind of rock or what kind of lava formed this kind of volcano. There are other types of volcanoes as well. There's some cinder cones and there's a mix. So, but the main types are stratovolcanoes and shield volcanoes. So when we looked at the videos, we saw that some of these um, uh, volcanoes, they had this very nice, calm bombing eruption so like this so non-explosive and you have low gas 
uh, which basically means you have low gas content and low viscosity. Because what happens in fact is, remember we talked about chemical compositions. So what happens is in fact that your gas is also part of your lava or your magma. So if you have very little gas and you have low viscosity, even if you have more gas and low viscosity, you don't get explosive eruptions. And I'm going to show you another experiment, and you can try this out as well. Okay, so what I've got here is pretending that this is my low viscosity lava. And you can see, and I, this is just water that I'm using. And I'm pretending I'm, I'm the gas. So I blow some gas into my lava. And you can see that it's kind of just bubbling off. So, and it's very easy to bubble into it and it doesn't kind of spatter and explodes and so on. So if you have something to drink and a straw, you can try this out. So it's easy bubbling and so on. So no explosive volcanoes. Then we have, on the other hand, these very, very um, explosive volcanoes. So with lots of S and uh, ash and gas coming out, and here you can see some examples of them. So explosive eruptions usually have a high gas content and high viscosity. And I'll show you a video clip. Here you can see how it kind of explodes and you wow. see uh, these little rock fragments flying out, you see ash coming out oh, and so on. Good. Another experiment to try this as well. Not not with the with the uh, rock fragments coming out, but uh, so to give you an understanding. So you can try this out. So in this case, remember what I've got. I've got in here. In this case, I've got room temperature um, syrup. Okay, and I've got a straw inside, and now I try to blow. And nothing's happening. If I blow uh, with the same amount of air that I used in my, in my, uh, uh, with here. Here it's easy. If I've used the same amount, nothing's happening. So I actually have to blow very hard. So this is my high gas content and see what's happening. Can you see how it's spattered? And then it's really not very easy to blow into. And you can see how it's, Kind of splattered up. So again, you can try this at home with a little bit of syrup. All right. And now it's time to make our own volcano. So what you will need for the eruption, you need bicarbonate, you need dishwashing liquid, and you need vinegar. And depending on what type of volcano you're going to make, and I'm going to show you all three different ways that you can do. Um, you need different things. So let me just move on to my other, turn to my camera. Right. So if you don't have anything in the home, don't worry. You can still make a volcano. What you just need is a bowl. So you put the bowl. Um, I'll just have to drive down. Sorry, guys. Uh, you just put the bowl onto a plate. You add your bicarbonate and all the ingredients on top here, and you do your volcanic eruption. Okay, so very simple. So if you don't have anything, you can still do your volcanic eruption. Oops. Then, if you have Play 
Play-Doh, and I made this Play-Doh yesterday, okay? So if you have Play-Doh, you can actually kind of form a nice shaped volcano. You can add trees. You can actually make a kind of a landscape, right? So this is a small volcano, and this looks like a strata volcano. So you're going to make a little well in here. You're going to flatten it down. Here we go. And what I usually do is, you don't have to do this, but what I like to do is I'm going to cover mine with, um, with plastic. The reason why I'm covering it with plastic so that my Play-Doh don't get messed up. Okay, so that is another option that you can do. So very simple, very quick, or very complicated, depending on how kind of um, natural looking you want to make it. So you can you can form it. You can even make a flat volcano, right? So with more runny lava coming out again, different shapes. You can make a steep one. So that is totally up to you. The one that I'm going to do today and I'm going to use is a paper volcano, right? So what you just need is you just need newspapers. What you're going to do is you're going to tear them and you're going to make little balls out of it. There we go. You scrunch them up. Scrunch them up. Like this. Scrunch them up. Make balls. There we go. So again, you can form or you can make your own shape. Uh, with this one, it's often quite nice if you have somebody to help, maybe your, your friend or your, your brother or sister or maybe your parents, whoever, a second person who can hold this down. I don't have a second person, but um, we're going to manage hopefully just as fine. So I want a big volcano, so I'm going to add one more ball on top. Here we go, right? Okay, so now what the other thing that you need is aluminium foil. So you're gonna take a large piece of aluminium foil. And what you're going to do is, and I'll just have to crunch it a little bit harder. Crunch it a little bit harder. There we go. There we go. And I'm going to place now my aluminium foil on top. And I'm going to put it around the sides. So I tuck it in on the sides. And I've got this nice, oh, look at this. It's even got a second vent here. it under a bit. Here we go. So here we go. And I've got my volcano just ready. I'm going to make a little well. Please do not push into the well so that the, uh, your, your aluminium foil gets uh, uh, has got a hole. So then, then your a, a volcanic eruption won't work. So it needs to be intact. If you just by accident kind of pushed a hole into it, you just take another peel of a piece of aluminium foil and you just uh, put it over. Here we go. Right, so, and let's see. And I'll just have to cover my table because I'm pretty sure that this is going to be messy. Okay, so I'm gonna make a little well in here. Okay, and now I have my bicarbonate, okay, that I'm going to put on. Here we go. All right, some bicarbonate. And I'm going to add a little bit of dishwashing liquid to it. Here we go. So this is just for the effect, for the foaming and so on. And what I also add is I've got a little bit of food coloring. So I'm going to add a few drops of food coloring as well. Oops. 
Okay, just a few drops. That's yellow. If you have a syringe, that even works a little bit better. Okay, some food coloring. And now comes the magic part. And I hope that everybody is ready to have their volcanic eruption. Okay, so I'm gonna take my volcano and let's see. And here you can see, in this case, we would have a sheared volcano because the lava is very, very runny, as you can see. And it's coming down and you can see how it foams. And the, the foam is basically um, just like the gas contents because sometimes when you look at, for example, your rocks like your basalt, you find that they've got holes in it. And this is because of the gas that comes with, a, with an eruption. All right, and I hope that you guys can do lots and lots of volcanic eruptions. If you have a photo that you want to share, you can send me an email to stec at ukzn.ac.za. I would, I'm always happy if somebody sends me something. And um, with that, I am basically finished. And I hope that there are some questions. What kind of is lava? Are there any questions? If you can just raise your hand, you know how to raise your hand. So there at the bottom. Sorry, where's Raise hand. How do we raise hand? Okay, then should have just just ask the question. I what color is lava? What color is lava? Okay, remember what I said, when lava comes to the surface, and this is what you've seen in, in a lot of these videos, your lava is in fact very, very hot. And because it's hot, it's, it's glowing, so it gives off this yellow, reddish, orangey color. But when it cools down, remember when it cools down, and I can see some really fantastic volcanoes, volcanic eruptions there, when it cools down, it turns into a different color. So it turns, usually turns black, or it turns a purplish color depending on what kind of uh, uh, lava you have and what kind of chemical composition your lava has. So Does it answer you. the question? Does it answer your question, Tim? Yes, thank you. So thank when you. it comes freshly out of the volcano, it is actually orangey uh, 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 red because it's so hot. And when it cools down, it basically, yeah, it, uh, it, it turns uh, usually, uh, a blackish color or dark color. Are there any other questions? No questions. The adults can also ask, oh, and I can see lots and lots of volcanic eruptions. Awesome, I love this. I love this. Oh, cool. Really cool volcanic eruptions. Thank you so much, guys. Okay, if there aren't any more questions, uh, there, I see there is a hand raised. Anybody else with a uh, with a uh, with a question? Nantayeko, Miss Lamini, you have a question. You have to unmute yourself if you want to uh, if you want to ask your question. How are volcanoes made? How are volcanoes made? Um. Okay, remember that I said that below the surface you have magma, so the, you have this hot molten rock. Okay, so and your 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 surface of of of, of the earth is uh, they've got some some cracks and so on. Okay, so now this hot molten rock. Remember when when you have tomato sauce or something like this boiling, you sometimes have this lid going up and down. So this hot molten rock wants to get to the surface. And it, as soon as it finds a crack, a weakness, it just pushes up, it pushes up, and it pushes out the lava, okay? So then the lava comes to the surface and it cools down. So then you have a small volcano. Then more lava comes to the surface through the same crack. It cools down and your volcano starts, in fact, growing. You understand? Does it answer your question? So. Volcanoes, yes. 
are growing when you have active volcanoes. So the more magma comes to the surface, the bigger your volcano is going to get because it forms new layers and new layers of it. Thank you. Okay, pleasure. Anybody else who has a question? Bye. Oh, no question, no more questions. Do you know that in fact, when you go up to the Drakensberg mountain, so for those people who live in KwaZulu-Natal, the top of the Drakensberg, the Drakensberg mountains is in fact made out of volcanoes. But it's, but it's, but it's locked down. <laughs> yeah, you, oh, that's, that's right. You can't go now um, during lockdown, but if you have the time and lockdown is gone, if you're going to go up to the Drakensberg mountain, absolutely, you can see the top, the amphitheater is basically made out of basalt. So it once was volcanic activities here in South Africa. And we find lots and lots of evidence of these volcanic activities here in South Africa. Unfortunately, no more active volcanoes except the ones of the coast of South Africa on Marion Island. That's the only one. Any other questions? Me. If this is it, I'm going to give back to Steph and she has some more announcements to do. Thank you so much for attending and I hope to see you next week when we're going to look at DNA. Steph, if you're there. You guys are fun. Um, thank you so much, Tanya, for such an informative and fun workshop. Um, we're still as part of a series, so there are two more. Next Friday is DNA. Um, uh, the, my apologies, um, the recipe for life. And uh, the following week is CSI, the chocolate cake case. Um, thank you so much, Tanya. Um, these can also be rewatched on our Facebook or website. Um, uh, feel free to engage, tell your friends, um, and thank you so much for coming. Thanks everybody for coming. And as I said, if you have a fantastic picture of your volcanic eruption, you can always send it to me at stec at ukzn.ac.za. Also, if you have any questions, you can also direct these questions directly to me. Thank you guys and enjoy your weekend.